Look at here. Do a little more. Okay. Good. Yeah. Bearing's done. Any trick to putting these little guys in their spots? These are called trunnion bearings, also known as knuckle bearings. So the bottom one gets pressed onto a knuckle. The top one sits loosely in the top of the actual housing. So the first thing we need to do is grab both knuckles. Well, we'll do one at a time, okay? And we need to put the bottom cap on. Top of the knuckle, because that's where the grease cap is. Narrow, that's the bottom. Okay. And that's where these little guys are gonna go. But we gotta put some shims in there. Yep. And some studs. Come wash and everything. Yes, I got them all. Did you get them all nice and greasy? Yeah, I got them so extremely greasy, so I can barely. The Loctite doesn't work. Perfect. <laughs> so, George is real proud. <laughs> Sorry. Got you down. That's all right. It's better to learn the hard way. It's my method. I greased all the wheel studs. <laughs> all that hard work greasing up your hardware. Yeah, I, I put a little so, tiny bit down so here too. So don't do it. I know, awesome. Gosh. <laughs> you're okay. Apparently, it helps to have uh, zero grease in the area when you're using stuff like Loctite. Short threads are coarse. These are the ones going into the housing. Okay. These long ones are not. More Just, red Loctite? Or? Yeah. Although pretty quick here, it might be blue. <laughs> So we're gonna need off and brake clean? Sounds like we're going to a parts store. <laughs> Come on. That'll work. Better than nothing. So we're getting those put on. <laughs> You're probably not used to silence. <laughs> just, I know, we need like music or something. Yeah. I usually just add lid jokes. Bad Are jokes. we asked personal questions? We're like, hmm. <laughs> yeah. Rob's got answers. <laughs> Where do babies come from, Rob? <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> Let's see if we can get to collapse this table. Oh, I like it. <laughs> Ready? I'm only putting on 35 pounds. Yeah. And then when you put like 35s on here and break the knuckles, then we'll put some real knuckles on this oh, thing. Geez. And then you can do this all over again. 33s, George. But that's you'll as, know how to do that's it. That's as much as it's going, dude. I think Rachel just called you a wood. I know. I heard it anyway. The first What's day I got this, my friend Troy said, "Put a, do a spring over lift, put a Chevy 350 in here, oh, and break everything, and do put 35s on." Who said that? My friend Troy. He's got a Jeep. He's got a Jeep. It's a Jeep thing. Oh yeah, Jeeps. I've never been a Jeep person. Does he have little club stickers on and stuff? Yeah, probably. Patches everywhere. <laughs> now Willie's. Yes, please. Okay, so that's one. So far you haven't acted weird yet. I know, I haven't said anything really. The day's young. Yeah. yeah. It's not too weird. You didn't, you, didn't to, you didn't try to mount Kai either, so. I did, I poked him in the side though, and I did ridicule him. You let the him. handsome guy get away without humping his leg. Gosh. <laughs> Who was that guy? Mr. Chance's guy. I, I, honestly, that was a handsome dude. Like, we're all hideous compared to that guy. Let's be fair. I get it! Especially Rob. These are the shims for the steering knuckles. So we do thin shim and then thick shim. Same for the other side. Then make sure you, after you paint the knuckles that there's no paint in here or on here. Otherwise they will not slide together because it's such a precise fit. So, and in this case, Ben did some really good paint work, on which we now need to side. clean up. Yeah, I did do good paint work on that one. Making this a lot harder, Ben. Well, that's what he's probably comes contact with every time somebody comes into a shop. He's like, "Hey, I need this done. I started on my own. Here's the box of parts. <laughs> Don't make it sloppy. It's only a stupid. No, I'm laughing because if I line up the camera just right, Ben's bent over, and you've got. What did you say? Oh, nothing. <laughs> One hand? <laughs> okay, you probably don't want to do too much sanding in there. Yeah. Why you just kill ask him? It's a... Uh, I mean, it's a very... Ragged car clean. Ragged car Chemicals, buddy. Chemicals. Cancer. Yep. Carcinogens. Way more fun. That's how you know it's working. Gosh. Don't paint inside of that part. The tolerances are really... high. So all the paint's out. I like putting a little tiny bit of grease on the surface where it slides together to help them slide in place. Okay. And that way it won't rust. Grease and hammer. You need this? No. 
You need a little wooden drift. Yeah, that's true. Here. Smack. Alright. I'm holding my wooden drift. Clean washers. Okay. Cleans. Okay, if you look at these nuts really close, the bottom has a washer almost built in. You see that little round section? Yeah. Top one's perfectly smooth, so round section towards a lock washer. Okay. Trusty 17? Yep. Send it home. Crisscross. Apple sauce. Yep, yep. <laughs> well, it's probably tough when you know stuff. <laughs> and you see somebody. Last thing we need to do is install the knuckle bearings or trunnion bearings in the bottom on the bottom cap. Last chance to get grease in there. <laughs> so you want to build up a little layer around here. Oh. All right, here we go. That's one. And now we need to put some trunnion bearings on there. So Is there any difference between those bearing packs? Between the top and bottom bearings? Nope. Okay. Identical, luckily. Yeah. So what I like to do, when you drive this on, you have to make sure you don't hit the outer rays, so it's going to distort this little outer ray. So you have to go on this inner ring right here. Yeah. You find the right size socket. That looks like it's on the inner ring. Knock it in. Um, maybe sit one of those on the bench. Okay. Pop that in there. The reason you put the grease down there is so as it knocks it down in there, kind of like on the berth, yeah. it forces grease into that bearing and it makes a nice layer down there so if any water gets in there, it can't rust. Hmm. Good. Perfect. You want to do it by yourself? Well, yeah. Yes. As, as long as I can dent this. Boy, that guy is a slippery bastard. <laughs> Setting these in the top. Just setting them. Yep. Oh, More paint removal. Take the paint off the. Oh, you painted these really good. Yeah, I got those. Wow. Mm -hmm. Nice. Here's that drill motor. We need that thing. Yeah, you got a real wire wheel? Right here. Yeah, right. yonder. Right side as the R. All right. Left side. L. L. Is that a Japanese part? <laughs> yeah, that's a Japanese, Japanese L. Yeah. It's a common. <laughs> Common Jap Japanese elf. <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just thinking about it. Okay, so you gotta figure out which side of the knuckle one is going on. Well, these, I believe, L and R also. Or this one's got an L at least. This one's got a four. There's an R. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, you should. Oh, George. <laughs> okay, so is that knuckle? So I have the left knuckle here, right? So yeah. You so want to trade arms or <laughs> you want to do the work twice? I love doing stuff twice. Turn the bearings are on. R. Right. Yeah. Now let's. And shims. If I were you, what about the the sleeves? Did I do those right? <laughs> okay, so put a thick shim on there. Okay. We'll put a thick shim on this one. Okay, you got your steering arm. Yep. Slide it in at a forty-five degree from the bottom. Get the bearing in. There you go. Pull up. There you go. I'm gonna let that come to rest and put that steering arm on. Okay. Make sure it doesn't flop out of there. Okay. You want the wooden thing? Yeah, we might have to. Really well, but we'll get it. Well, I did paint the living shit out of it. Okay. Okay. Backwards. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little tired. Going at 45. There we go. What side of Burfield's more susceptible to breaking? What side Burfield is more susceptible it to? It doesn't matter. But it really, what, what makes them weak is the more you turn and the more load you put on is what breaks them. Yeah. So, so it's finesse. If you're backing up and you have the wheels turned, that's yeah. the worst thing, especially if you're backing up the hill, that's the worst thing you can do to a bird. There you go. I always check these with two nuts. You don't have to use all four of them. Yeah. So you just put two opposite in there. Yeah washers is you slowly run these down but as you're doing it turn the, the knuckle back and forth so if you mm -hmm. feel the bearing tightening up you know it's too tight so 
we have some preload there. By the time we put the other two comb washers on and nuts, it might be too tight. And at this point, we want to finish tightening up the bottom. That actually doesn't feel bad. Okay. Cross thread. <laughs> Better than a lock nut. Yeah. Man. Wrong way. Yeah. Righty tighty, huh? <laughs> what is it? You guys seen the Netflix show Still Game? No. Uh -oh. Oh, it's man. really good. Really? Is that old Scottish? It's about pensioners in Scotland. Some old Scottish pensioners, and all they do is just run around just. Wait, did you say pissers? Pensioners. So oh. it's like retired people. Oh, okay. It's going. Hmm. But might as well get your workout. Get the whole damn thing. Smack me upside the head. <laughs> you can make it look like a total fix in it right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now grab an impact. That actually feels really good. That's about how much preload you want. Some resistance, but as you're pulling, it needs to feel smooth. If it's if it's like goes in steps, it's going each, way too tight. Yeah, each you know, groove of the bearings is right. <laughs> getting worn in. You feel it feels pretty smooth. There's some resistance, which is what you want. This right. might be a hair tighter than factory spec, but realistically, once that settles in, it'll be fine. And it's that's not bad at all. There you go. Beauty. Yeah. That's exactly how it should feel. So I get to know that. Hold, hold the bearings in. <laughs> I just and you, want can, to... you can use a fish scale. Yeah. And typically seven to ten pounds on a fish scale on a smooth pull. We're running out of time. I haven't slept in 24 hours. Yeah. yeah. So George is gonna give me some pointers. And I'm gonna remember it because it's on film here. All right, have at it, George. When you install the spindles, first take these over to the wire wheel and polish the surface up. Okay. On both of them, same here, to knock all the old gasket material off. I can do that. And then polish this with a little bit of Brillo pad. Um, when you install these. Build up a berm of grease here, and then on the inside, this bushing, the brass bushing, the berm exactly yeah. rides in there at all times. So put a bunch in here, shove some in here with your finger, and same in here. So there's a complete layer of grease in here. Okay. That'll keep it lubricated, keep it from galling, and it won't rust. And then the same thing when you install this guy, put a bunch of grease on here too, and you can pump some more in here. So when you install it, a bunch of grease in there. Ultimately, you can add more grease here after the fact. Okay, good. The other thing I like to do is I take a couple of long bolts that are this thread page. These should be a 10 by 1.25. Yeah. I take the bolts, I cut the head off, and then I use a cutoff wheel to cut a slot into them so you can use them with a flat blade screwdriver okay. and use them as alignment dowels. You put two of them in there, you slide the gasket on, you slide the spindle on, the other gasket, and your backing plate, and then all your bolts. That way you're not trying to sit there and hold five things in place yeah. and trying to get bolts in. It'll just sit there. Start four other bolts, take the, your, spin, your little dowels out, put the rest on. already in place. Mm -hmm. Make sure you put Loctite on there. Um, there is a specific order because you're going to have five parts that are going to line up here. Yeah. So some kind of manual or explode view or something would help. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll text you an explode view. You know? Oh, um, you're crazy. But yeah, okay. <laughs> make sure you put grease in here. Otherwise, okay. these just the first thing in here and pull them up. After that, it's the dust shields, right? And yep. the backing plate yes. laminators and... So, but all those go on at the same time. You're going to have these, these, and two different gaskets. Okay. And the spindle. So, all right. bolts. I can send you something. Like that. It'll you be good. I got the bolts. They're in that. The They're on the beach towel. <laughs> I bet they are. <laughs> the degreasy beach towel. <laughs> Grab one of the bigger wheel bearings. Greasy down. What's a wheel bearing? <laughs> Put some grease on that bearing race. Oh, right. shit. Okay. Put this right here for now. You can see the, the sleep deprivation starting to... <laughs> Put some Start grease. His brain from go ahead, George. You hold it. There you go. Hold her go steady. Ahead. There we go. We can always add more. Yep. But you basically want a layer of grease on the bearing surface. So, this guy here. Bare hands in there. No gloves. It's kind of funny because you've been wearing gloves the entire time until just now. <laughs> so then you sit your bearing in there. And then Big what bearing. I like to do, again, because ultimately you cannot access that. Once everything's installed, there's no way to grease that. So what I like to do, you get to operate the gun. Okay. 
Good. I like to work my way around. Co oh, corona. COVID. Oh. Sorry about COVID, everybody. <laughs> Slowly squeeze that. Slowly squeeze. There you go. Go ahead. Okay, George. See, so you get kind of a nice bead of grease in there. Yeah. And you take your seal, and when you smack the seal down in there, it forces that grease in. And again, it creates just, a protective layer, too. Okay. So What, uh, what do you think? The rubber? No, for the seal? Nah, we'll use this guy. Hammer? Well, he's got a special thing. You get oh, he's got a... <laughs> See, maybe for the next episode, you mine. can buy a real seal driver <laughs> set with the big size, not the, the, the Fisher size. Price the, one. The baby sets. <laughs> Once you get it started, you can offset it a little bit. And you don't have to kill it. As long as it's, as soon as it's flush, you're done. Okay. And then just wipe a little bit of grease in here and you're good to go. Nice. Ultimately, once you install that, yeah, put a little bit of grease on your fingers, put some on the outside here because this is going to end up riding in here. That's why this is here. Oh, okay. So that's so just when the extra it's, when it's the axle, that. This goes on here that creates a dust shield, but yeah. You gotta have a little bit of grease in there. So put a little bit in here, a little bit in here. When you go to put the other bearing on, pack this with grease right here. So literally, you gotta fill this entire thing up with grease until you can kind of run your hand across and just have a smooth kind of sleeve of grease in there and then put some on here, shove your bearing on there. Same with the, the spindles. Once you have your spindles installed, yeah. you're gonna have a bunch of grease on the inside. Literally put a thin layer of grease on this entire thing and a little bit on here because the wheel hub seal that we just installed, is gonna that be rides on here. So okay. to help it slide in place, and then it could called up a little bit of grease on there. I'll be rewatching this. I have not. He's I don't remember anything George has said just now. But I'm like, <laughs> yeah, unicorns. If you run into I'll pet all the unicorns, George. Don't worry about it. I feel good about this. That's a good start. Yeah. Oh, dude, you know. I saw it. Mm. And the hard part's over. Hey man. So for the, I would have quit. Obviously, things don't always go as planned, even when you have pros. And people like Rob around, or Ty, or George. <laughs> That's what I said when I said pros. But I've got a good handle on things. Hopefully there's some tips in there that you guys can pick up on. Uh, it's never, we got a lot done. It's never a full instructional video here. Like there's always gonna be some room, room for mistakes. And uh, again, second set of hands, get your wife in there or your husband to help you. Thanks for watching, like, share, and subscribe. If you need parts, supplies, advice, uh, just about intercourse or anything, George Esther, Valley Hybrids, just ask him. The guy's an open book. He's an open book. See you next time. Project Rollins.